Awesome. Thank you guys um, for allowing me to come out here. Sorry, my PowerPoint presentation isn't going to be up for you guys, but um, they'll make it available for you, or you can go onto my website too. I'll put it on there for you. Um, so I opened Genesis Chiropractic Wellness Center about nine months ago. Um, I'm really huge on teaching people the importance of taking a responsible and preventative approach to their health. So I do that through a couple different things. First and foremost, chiropractic care. Um, how many of you guys have ever been to a chiropractor? Not a lot of you guys? Wow, that's awesome. Well, I'm gonna teach you a lot about the human body in chiropractic. Um, the second element I do is exercise. So every Saturday morning, my patients actually work out with me. It's only 12 minutes. Um, it's like a burst training workout. It's really good, they love it. And we have people anywhere from their 20s all the way into their 40s and 50s doing it. Um, the other element that I do is nutrition. Every patient that comes to the office, they get some type of nutrition protocol. Whether their goal is maybe detoxification, weight loss, um, just eating healthier, we just make it manageable for them. And then the other element is lifelong learning. So every month in my office, I do some type of presentation um, based on what the um, health talk of the month is. So this month, it's all on fat loss. And I have a couple of flyers. If you guys are interested, they're always free for you. So. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, how many of you guys have made the resolution to start eating healthier? How many of you guys have stuck to it? Good, that's awesome, really good. Okay, well here in chiropractic, I talk about three things. They're called the three T's. Um, they're the three traumas or toxins that have an effect on the body and cause stress. So the three causes of stress to the body, we have toxins. Um, toxins could be from the environment. Um, pesticides maybe in the foods that we eat, um, in the air that we breathe, there's toxins in that. Um, the second is physical trauma. The second T is T for trauma. And that would be like a physical stress on your body. Maybe it's from poor posture at work. A lot of us sit on the computer all the time. We're slouched over. And over time, your body starts adapting to that pattern. Uh, another trauma could be sports, sports injuries. Um, you could also have car accidents. And I know a lot of people associate maybe car accidents in chiropractic. Um, and then the third T is called thoughts. It's your mindset or emotional stresses on your body. Because your emotions really have a huge impact in how the way that your body functions. Your mind and body is completely connected. And I'll go in a little bit more detail with that for you. So again, chemicals would be something like if you go to the gym and you notice that you're sore the next two days, that would be a buildup of something called lactic acid in the muscles, where the body isn't getting all of the acid out of the muscles yet, so you get that feeling of soreness. Okay. Um, so emotional stress, let's go into that a little bit so you guys have a better understanding of exactly how your mind can have an impact on how your body functions and heals. Um, so think about job stress or just in general, let's talk about maybe 100 years ago. So 100 years ago, if you were sitting in front of a water hole trying to get water and a tiger came up behind you, what would you do? You'd run, you'd kind of freak out a little bit, right? Your body knows that you're gonna have two responses. You're either gonna run from the tiger or you're gonna fight the tiger. It's up to you what you wanna do, I'm gonna run from the tiger. But immediately what happens is your brain sends a message through the nerve system. It sends a message telling the adrenal gland, it's a gland right above your kidney, it tells the adrenal gland to turn on your stress response. So immediately your body knows, go into stress mode. So what does it do? It releases two types of hormones in your body. Cortisol, how many of you guys have ever heard of cortisol? What have you heard about cortisol? Abdominal fat, exactly. But your body releases cortisol in that moment because it knows I have to use cortisol to heal the body. The second thing it's gonna do with the cortisol is it's gonna cause your blood pressure to go up. So when you're running from the tiger, your body needs to have the blood pressure to go up so that way the blood can go feed the muscles and get the muscles stronger. The second thing that's gonna happen is your cholesterol level is gonna go up. So in a stressful response, why would your cholesterol levels go up? A lot of us associate cholesterol as being a bad thing and it's not necessarily bad for your body. Your body uses cholesterol to try to heal tissues. So if you know that you're gonna to have to run from the tiger or let's say you fight the tiger, your body innately knows that it has to heal tissues at some point, so it's gonna increase its cholesterol. The third thing that's gonna happen is your sugar and fat cravings are gonna go up. That's what happens in stress. So we always think, why am I craving like french fries or donuts when I'm stressed out? Your body innately knows I need fat and I need sugar because those are the things that produce cortisol. Those are the things that produce hormones. So innately, it's not your fault that you do crave that stuff, right? 
The point is how do we get the stress down so that we don't have those cravings? The second thing that the adrenal glands are gonna release are something called catecholamines. There's a couple different neurotransmitters they're called. Basically, your body's gonna increase, use the catecholamines to increase the heart rate. It's also gonna decrease something called serotonin. Have you guys heard of serotonin? It's a hormone in the body. Anyone know what it does? Melatonin is sleep. Yep, you're close. What was? It's a calm. Calm. It's your happy hormone. It's the hormone that keeps you happy. Now, if you're going to fight the tiger, you're going to run from it. Your body says, I don't need to be happy, so it downregulates serotonin. So what do you think happens when your body's not producing enough serotonin? Symptoms like depression. You start to get depressed all the time. So innately, that's exactly how stress responds to the body. So the point is now, 100 years later, when we're not in front of a drinking hole with a tiger behind us, but instead it's our boss behind us, and we're sitting at a desk, your body doesn't know the difference. It, like Only your mind knows, okay, tiger versus boss, but your body still responds the same way. So if you're not going to be running or fighting the tiger, you're more prone to having weight gain because you have cortisol being released. So how do we fight and combat the stress? There's a couple different elements we can do, and I want to talk to you guys today more about nutrition and what you can do, um, things that you can eat on a daily basis that's going to help your body fight back at stress response. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So when we're stressed out, what is one thing that we start to do? We drink more soda. Why? Because it has caffeine, right? We try to go towards caffeinated beverages or maybe even coffee because we have to stay awake all the time. Um, but one thing that I like to to speak about is energy drinks. How many of you guys drink the energy drinks often or know people that do? The energy drinks are really high in caffeine. They have seven times as, men, as much caffeine than a regular coffee or even Coke. That's a ton of caffeine when you think about it. And the FDA has just released that there's at least 33 to 34 different adverse reactions to the energy drinks, meaning you're gonna have arrhythmias, so your heart's gonna kind of have the flutters. Um, it's gonna, you're gonna be more prone to things like allergies or have stomach aches. Um, they even linked a couple of 14 year olds that drank, there was an FDA that released this, that two 14 year olds, they drank two of the energy drinks in one day and they died from caffeine toxicity or from cardiac arrhythmia. So we don't wanna resort to energy drinks, right? Everything in moderation. So another thing that we tend to go towards again is coffee. So how many of you guys are big coffee drinkers? I mean, you guys own a Keurig, because I definitely do. <laughs> I love coffee. Um, what do you put inside of your coffee? Like, do you drink it black? I do, but <laughs> um, you put sugar, right, and cream. So let's go through creamers, for instance. If you use the powder creamer, how many of you guys still use the powder creamer? You do? Um, powder creamer, I would stay away from. If you look on the back in the ingredients, you're probably not going to be able to pronounce a lot of the ingredients in powdered creamer. Um, it's kind of got one of the more worse ingredient labels that I've seen. Um, the other creamer that you can use, again, is just like milk. Um, but milk has a lot of sugar in it. Uh, that's just naturally what happens when you look on the back of the carton. It says milk and it says a lot of sugar in there. So you always want to try to stay and, and keep your sugar levels down. And I'll speak a little bit more on why with that. Um, the other thing are uh, the sweeteners. So how many of you guys use artificial sweeteners? Artificial sweeteners? This is the way I explain artificial sweeteners or any type of chemical. Um, so if there was a baby across the room and the baby was chewing on a toy and the toy had paint chips coming off of it, what would you do? You would take the toy away, right? Why? Yeah, because there's paint chips coming off of it, exactly. You wouldn't feed paint chips to a baby. There's no calories in paint chips right? But it's still chemicals, it's still toxins. The same thing with artificial sweeteners. There's no calories in them, but there's still chemicals, there's still toxins, and they still have an impact on your body. What happens is when you ingest something like a chemical or a toxin, is your body can't recognize it. So where is it going to store it? It stores it in fat tissue. So if it's going to store it in fat tissue, that means your fat tissue is not going to be able to recognize or tell the body hey, there's fat here and we need to get rid of it. It starts messing with the hormone and the chemical layers inside of the cell itself. Does that make sense? So what do we want to go for? Two options. Stevia. How many of you guys have tried stevia? Good. And then if you don't like stevia, most people don't, you go with xylitol. 
Um, xylitol is another type of plant fiber. They're both really uh, good alternatives. They don't have any impact on your body, unless you have them in crazy high amounts, but you don't have to worry about that. Um, personally, I don't use either one. Uh, I was born with a gene that doesn't allow me to digest sugar. So lucky for me, I've probably never eaten half the stuff that's on, on the shelves. Yes? What's the brand name for the Um, Now? Yeah. N-O-W? Oh, N-O-W. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, now um, they sell it. If you go to like the vitamin shop, um, they sell a lot of those over there. The other alternative I would say, a lot of people like agave, go for raw honey. Agave is the way it's broken down and process, processed in the body, it's no different than high fructose corn syrup. Unfortunately, it's a marketing thing. Um, so I would go for um, the raw honey. And the reason you want it raw is because they haven't processed it, heated it up, and gotten rid of all the enzymes in it. And we're in Gainesville, it's pretty easy to find some raw honey around here. Okay. So raw honey, xylitol, and stevia. Okay. Okay, so this was a really good slide. I wanted to show you guys. If you ever taken an apple and you've cut it in half, um, and you know if you let it sit out, what happens to the apple? It turns brown. Why does it turn brown? Yes, it has a reaction to the oxygen. It's called oxidative stress. So it's a stress on the apple. It's oxidative stress. And what it does is it causes, if you think about it this way, it causes an aging process to happen in the apple. So the same thing happens inside of your body when you have inflammation in the body. So inflammation on the body, and we'll talk about what causes that, will cause the aging process to speed up. If you speed up the aging process in your body, you're more likely to die sooner. So we don't want to speed up the aging process. Now, things that can start to uh, increase the aging process in the body, things that cause inflammation are um, sugars. So white sugars, for instance, or like white breads, for instance. Those things, if you think about it, are like sandpaper on the arteries. So if you take your artery and let's say you cut it open and you take sandpaper and you rub it on the artery, that's essentially what sugar starts to do to the arteries. And that's when we start to get things called placking. Placking is what happens when you have a combination of high fats and high sugars together, and it causes that sandpaper effect on your artery. I like to call it sandpaper effect. And what it does is it creates inflammation that will speed up the aging process inside your body. So we all know that we need to stay away from sugar, but we don't know why. That's why, and that's how you can start to cause um, like a cardiovascular event over time. Okay. So factors that help to, or that increase your risk for coronary artery disease are things like your weight. If you're carrying an extra 10 pounds or so around your abdomen, you're twice as likely to have um, high blood pressure, which again, that can contribute to heart disease over time. Um, poor diet, if you're eating a lot of um, high fat foods or high grain um, foods, and I'll go over that a little bit in a second, um, those things will cause inflammation in the body itself. Uh, sedentary lifestyle, Some of, there's a research study that just came out that said if you are sitting at work all the time, get up and stretch, but if you're sitting at work all the time, um, that can be just as bad as smoking on your body because a sedentary lifestyle, um, that causes stress to your body. So get up, um, stretch, move around, take a little walk, and on top of that, you'll probably be more awake, you'll get more energy from that. Okay, and then aspartame, I know a lot of like yogurts and stuff are sweetened with aspartame. I don't know if you guys ever noticed that. Um, yeah, almost everything. They're actually putting aspartame in milk now, cow's milk, which is scary. Aspartame, almost every gum out there has aspartame in it. Yeah, and aspartame was denied by the FDA for even putting it on the market about 80 times. It took them 80 times to even push it through. It looks like a black tar, um, but it can have so many different reactions on the body. Um, it's really a huge cause in things like diabetes, um, cardiovascular events, lupus, a lot of joint pain, stiffness, achiness. That's what I see in, it, in my profession. Um, so where are you going to find sugar? Where is like, let, let's, your, the PowerPoint slide has the pictures on here, but let's think about this. Okay, so if I have a bottle of ketchup and I have a bowl of ice cream, which one has more sugar? Yes, you guys are awesome. You guys already know this. <laughs> Um, yeah, ketchup actually has more sugar per serving than ice cream per serving. And so the point of this is that 
sugar's really hidden everywhere if you think about it. Um, even if you look at your cereals, if you have a lot of cereal for breakfast and stuff, that has a ton of sugar in it. Now, here's the rule of thumb. Your body can't recognize anything under five grams. So anything under five grams of sugar in one sitting, your body doesn't recognize it, which means it's not gonna spike something called insulin in your body. And when you spike insulin, you're more prone to gaining weight. Um, so you wanna keep that, that um, grams under five when you're eating something. Now, white rice versus brown rice, I think we all have heard now, white rice is worse for you than brown rice. But that's because, again, it'll spike that insulin level in the body, which makes you more prone to gaining weight or holding on to weight. Uh, most soft drinks, those all have it. Um, if you go from a regular, like Coke, to like a diet, the difference is they now put the chemicals in it. So aspartame is in the Diet Coke. Um, I would almost argue that the aspartame is worse from you than the regular Coke, um, so don't worry about the calorie content from that. But again, all of the, the sugar, it'll start to create an inflammatory response in the body. More inflammation means more aging, and it also means more risk, again, for weight gain, okay? Uh, do you guys ever hear the difference between omega-3 omega and omega-6? Okay, do you guys know what omega-3 comes from? Fish, right, marine, and it also comes from plants. So fish oil or flaxseed oil. And then you have something, that's omega-3, and then you have omega-6. Omega-6 is high in cereals, breads, um, any type of like starchy carbohydrate. Now omega-6, here in America, our ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is 20 to 1. So we're taking in 20 times more omega-6 than we are omega-3 which it really should be the reverse. We should have almost a three to, or a one to three ratio. So you wanna have more omega-3 in your diet than you do omega-6. So omega-6, if you look at like the old, do you guys remember the old food pyramid where they have the pyramid on the bottom? What was on the bottom? Bre yeah, grains and breads. Yeah, that's how our culture got to be, uh, you know, dominant in omega-6, when really it's gonna be completely flipped now because we really need to focus on omega-3s. Omega-3 is anti-inflammatory, meaning it's going to clean out your arteries, it's going to clean out your cells. And the more that you can stick to an omega-3 diet versus omega-6, you're going to be more likely to lose weight because you're not going to store the excess carbohydrates inside of your cells. Now, a lot of people go on these strict diets where um, it's you know, heavy on fat and it's heavy on protein and they, they get rid of all the carbohydrates. How many of you guys have ever tried that? I've definitely tried it. And this is what happens with your body, is it goes through a rubber band effect. So if you completely strip all the carbohydrates out of your body, um, the body doesn't now use all the insulin levels that it needs to. And basically the moment that you start to reintroduce a carbohydrate in your body, your body will have the rubber band effect where the metabolism is gonna spike and it's literally gonna cause you to gain almost twice as much weight as what you lost before. So a lot of people say, yeah, I took carbohydrates out of my diet and the moment I went back on, I gained all the weight back. That's why. So you always have to do um, a good, have a good balance within your body. Okay, have a good balance of carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Um, omega-6 is also found in like rancid oils. Um, so canola oil it's found in, corn oil, um, peanut oil. All of those oils are what's considered rancid, and that causes the aging process to increase or that inflammatory response in the body. So what are some of the oils that are good for us? Yes, olive oil is awesome. I would say use olive oil for salads and for like as a dressing. Um, what is the oil that you want to cook with? Coconut oil is awesome. Grapeseed oil is good. Um, there's one enzyme in it that a lot of people are questioning right now. Um, I would use it again for like a dressing and not necessarily to cook with it. The coconut oil has a really high temperature tolerance, meaning that it's not going to go bad when you cook with it or bake with it. Plus it keeps all your vegetables or meats really, really moist, which is good. Tastes better. Um, you can get some of them that don't. I know the one at Trader Joe's, for instance, that one's really light. It doesn't taste like coconut at all. Versus if you get, there's a brand called Spectrum, that's a little bit more flavored, but I like, I personally like the flavor. It's just up to you. Okay. Avocado oil. It's really good. Yeah. Um, heat, not so much. Um, I would again, stick with the coconut oil, peanut oil. 
that one is more on the omega-6 side. That's more of a rancid oil. And unfortunately, most of it's been genetically modified, and that's why they can, you know, push it off. So, okay. Um, if you think about breads or cookies and crackers, cookies and crackers have a lot of omega-6 in it just because they have a lot of rancid oils. If you ever turn over the package and look on the ingredients, um, you'll see, like, they have some type of hydrogenated oil in it. Regardless if it's partially hydrogenated or just hydrogenated, I would just stay away from it because it's probably not natural. So another source that you can get like omega-3s from are nuts and seeds. Um, when you buy them on the shelf, I would let you know that if you look on the back of the label, most of them have been like roasted or fried in some type of oil. They usually use cottonseed oil, so stay away from those sources. You just want to look on the ingredients. It should just say almonds or in salt or pistachio is salt. You don't want to get anything that's really been cooked in an oil because then it's rancid, which means you're more prone to weight gain versus weight loss. Um, I'll tell you guys my secret stash. If you go to Target, um, they have this big container. Um, I think it's like a pound of nuts and they only sell it for like $10. It's all mixed nuts and um, it's really cheap, but most nuts you're gonna pay a pretty big price for except for at Target. But last time I did this, and I told people my source, I went out to go get some, and they were all sold out. <laughs> I was so bummed. <laughs> I was like, i got to stop telling people, but it's a really good deal. OK, um, trans fats. How many guys have heard of trans fats? OK, if something says, like if it's a package of popcorn, let's say, and it says zero trans fats, does that mean that there's no trans fats in it? No. It depends on the serving size, right? So the FDA says it has to be um, under one gram or under 0.5 grams of trans fat. So what they do is they reduce the serving size so that it does have 0.5 grams of trans fat in it. If you guys, I don't know, if you, if you like, you know, fast food or McDonald's, for instance, if you ever eat there even once in a while, if you ever notice like the coating on your teeth after you eat something like that, I only know this because my brother has recognized this, but the coating, that's trans fats, that's rancid oils that stays on your teeth. So, reasons to stay away from fast food. <laughs> okay, and again, that'll cause that inflammatory response to go up in the body. More inflammation means uh, more of an aging process in your body, also more likely to hold on to weight and not lose it. Fortune cookies, um, not so fortunate. They have some of the worst ingredients in there than I've ever seen, too. And I think they're actually taking the ingredients off of the little packages now. They're catching on. <laughs> Okay, so good fats, good oils, um, avocados, avocado oil. I eat at least an avocado every day. Um, it has really good properties in it, like fiber. Um, it has a ton of really good fats, and it gives you a lot of energy. There's something in it called medium-chain tri triglycerides, and it basically gives you a lot of energy pretty quickly. Um, raw nuts and seeds, we said. Um, raw butter, um, if you get regular butter versus margarine, uh, I know there's a huge margarine kick. But if you ever look on the back of the ingredients of margarine, is it even butter? No. It's a ton of chemicals in it. And if you take a stick of butter and you take a stick of margarine and you put them out in the forest, which one do you think is going to get eaten first? Butter, because it's natural. Nothing will touch the margarine, I promise you. You can try it. Nothing will touch margarine because it's all synthetic, it's all processed, it's all man-made. Um, and then in terms of fish, we'll go over your source of fish. Um, do you guys know the difference between farm-raised versus, um, I guess, Atlantic or wild-caught? Wild yeah. Okay, the farm-raised, they've taught fish how to eat corn. It's amazing how we've done this. But they keep them in a bunch of nets, and they feed them corn. Um, so you are what you eat and what they ate. So if they ate corn and it's a fish, you're, and you think you're eating fish, you're essentially eating corn, too. Uh, because it messes up their omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, just like it does in our body. Okay? So you want to go for wild-caught. And even Sam's Club, they have wild-caught fish, too, that you can get. Okay. So if you guys are driving a really nice Lamborghini and in Gainesville, <laughs> you're driving a Lamborghini and you're like, oh, no, I have to stop for gas. And so you stop at the gas station. What kind of fuel are you going to put in your Lamborghini? The best fuel. Exactly. You wouldn't put some, some uh, gas that's really going to mess up your Lamborghini. Uh, you wouldn't put that in your Lamborghini. So essentially, you want to put the best fuel inside of your body, too.
Because the reality is you can replace the parts on your Lamborghini, but you can only really replace a couple of those parts on your body. You can only go under enough surgery enough times, right? So think of your body more of a temple and you have to put it in, put the foods inside of it that you want it to perform. Um, so a couple of rules of thumb, again, go for the healthier fats, okay, healthy fats. And that should be at almost 30 to 40% of your diet is good healthy fats because your cells are all made up of a fat layer. So the better the fat, then the better that your cells are gonna perform together. Okay, eliminate white sugar and flour. Okay, white sugar and flour. For one, you've got a ton of gluten in it. And a lot of people have gluten intolerances. If you're getting things like headaches, digestive um, issues, a lot of that can be tied into gluten or even allergies or asthma. Um, and then the, the third thing we'll talk about is um, grain-fed beef. So eliminate the grain-fed beef. You want to have grass-fed. What's the difference between grain and grass-fed? Corn. Corn, exactly. It's, good. It's, a it's a reoccurring thing. And I mean, yeah, exactly. And if you notice, like if you go on a diet for a whole week and you just eat corn, you're going to gain some weight real quick. Why? Because it fattens animals up really quickly. That's why we feed it to them get some fatter quicker so that we can eat them quicker, right? Um, but the, essentially that's what happens when you feed um, your body with foods that have ate corn. So you want them to be in their most natural environment ever. And it's so easy here in Gainesville because we have so many farms around us, right? So go for grass-fed, Trader Joe's has it, Publix, they even sell it, I buy some of theirs. Um, those are the best for you. Um, in terms of, what else do I have on here? Smart Balance versus like regular butter. Do you guys ever use Smart Balance? Okay, just go for regular butter. I promise you, you'll be happier and it tastes better. <laughs> okay, um, in terms of water, so you want to try to drink at least half your body weight in ounces of water per day. It seems like a lot, but uh, most times we think we're thirsty and we're not, or I'm sorry, we think we're hungry and we're just thirsty. We just haven't had enough water or do you feel like Two, three o'clock, you kind of get that downer for the day. Um, try drinking a whole glass of water, you'd be surprised. Your body's probably just dehydrated. Can you go back to sugars for a minute? Yeah. What about the whole raw sugar thing? Is that better than the granulated? Yeah, it's definitely better. Yeah. Um, I always tell people xylitol and stevia because it's things that won't spike the blood sugar levels, the insulin levels. I don't like the taste of those. You don't? Mm. Honey? I would do honey but like when you're cooking, when you're cooking. Bread, do sugar in the raw sugar. yeah that's the best one out there at least um, the some of the ones like Truvia Truvia has they chemical they still I you know labels, even though it says stevia on it. yeah it's still got some type of chemical compound like maltodextrin or dextrose in it and those are corn sugars we've just done everything with corn it's amazing I know Okay, um, I kind of want to show you guys this picture. Can you kind of see it? You see like the top, there's not a lot of light. Yeah. And you see down here, there's a lot of light. You guys can kind of see that? Okay, what they did was they wanted to extract how much energy was coming out of certain foods. So up here, or we should say down here, those are lentil sprouts. So those are natural grains that we found in the earth. And they can extract and see how much energy comes out of it. Based on how much energy comes out of it, that's how we know how to do a calorie. The calorie is heat energy coming out of that. The ones on the top, that is from uh, French fries from McDonald's. So do you think there's a lot of energy in there? Not so much. <laughs> exactly. It's just a lot of rancid oils and, um, you know, just a high calorie source from rancid oils. Is that, I know that that term before rancid oil, but it makes sense. Does it make sense to you now? It does. Good. It makes sense. It's more of a very great at the same time. Good. Yeah, so like when you turn over a package of nuts and it says cottonseed oil, you're like, rancid, no, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> you think you're doing yourself justice, and you are by eating the nut, but the coating is so terrible. <laughs> okay, so I always do, this is called what I call the house of health. Um, so basically, this is how you want to build your diet. Um, at the base, the foundation, it should be built off of greens, like healthy greens, because they have a lot of vitamins, minerals, nutrients inside of them and also really good fats and oils because that will feed the nerve system. Your nerve system is made up in your brain is made up primarily of fats anyway. So 
the better that you can start to feed your nerve system, the better your body's going to heal and it's going to respond. Um, then from there, you want to build like the framework of your house of health um, based on like low sugar fruits, nuts and seeds. And then at the very top, you would have things like fish or grass fed beef, um, chicken that's been humanely raised, hopefully not tortured. Okay. They ate. ate. <laughs> uh -huh. And the stress response, I mean, sort of tying it all back to the stress response of, for like chickens that are raised in those conditions that um, are deplorable. Yeah. Could, is it true that their stress response then goes in, you know, creates a fattier meat or um, a I, I agree with that, and I'm sure there's a ton of research on there. I really haven't looked at it, but I can tell you that one thing I did see, I watched a documentary on fish. How boring, I know. But <laughs> I, was, I was watching this documentary, and they were talking about salmon and the way to choose your salmon. And they said that if there's, like, a lot of blood in it, that means that the, the uh, fish was stressed when it was caught and when it was killed. So if there's a, I know they have bleeding out mechanisms and stuff, but if there's a lot of blood in it, that means that it's not going to be um, as great of tasting of a fish because then it creates a, like a stress response and it almost causes like a rubbery effect in the salmon itself versus if it's like naturally caught and it, I don't know how it wouldn't know that it's going to die. <laughs> um, but um, those fish, they taste a whole lot better. They have better texture and everything to them. So I would imagine the same thing with chicken and the same thing with cow. Oh, yeah. It makes it really tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the body knows. It, your body is smarter than like any doctor or anything out there. Your body innately knows how to respond to something, and it's going to do it the same way every time. So if you're stressed out, it's going to create like a stress response in it, and the same thing with an animal. If it's stressed out when it's killed, um, it's going to have the same effect with it. So, Okay. Um, if you have 22 pounds here, we'll go through the statistic. If you have 22 pounds to lose, I know it seems like a lot, but if you have 22 pounds to lose, that can reduce your risk of heart disease or heart attack by as much as 75%. That's a ton if you think about it. Um, so how many like relatives that you know that need to maybe lose weight? Um, there's some incentive for them and getting them healthy. Plus they'll have more energy with it. That's always good. Okay, let's talk about my favorite thing ever, the spine and the nerve system, because I love it. Um, I actually have an interesting story. I went into chiropractic, uh, never been adjusted before. Just I was accepted to med school, I was accepted in chiropractic college, and I was like, man, I don't know which way to go, but I visited a chiropractor and I loved that they owned their own business, so that was my route. Um, but when I was in chiropractic college, I used to have these incredible migraines. These, um, I would have headaches almost every day, but the migraines would send me to the hospital at least two, three times a month. And they would have to put my body on morphine just to get rid of the pain. It was a nightmare, it was annoying, and I didn't want to live that way. And when I was going through chiropractic college, I noticed that the headaches started going away once I started getting adjusted. Um, so I took it upon myself to uh, travel to a bunch of different offices when I was going through school to figure out the best techniques in chiropractic and how it can really help someone. So your body is all controlled by one thing. What is it? Your brain. Exactly. Your brain controls everything in the body. So the brain sends messages through the spinal cord, and it sends it out through all the nerves to every organ, every cell, every tissue in the body. So for your heart to beat in your chest or for your lungs to take in a breath of air and breathe, the information from the brain has to go through that spinal cord, goes out the nerve to that organ telling it how to operate or how to work. Okay. Now the thing that I looked at in chiropractic um, it's very different in school than it was in real life because I learned this technique, it was called structural correction. And what it did was we looked at the spine and we wanted to make sure that it was straight from front to back. If it's curved, what is that called? Exactly, scoliosis. But you want to make sure it's straight from front to back so there's no pressure or interference on that nerve system. And then from the side you should have three curves. So you should have a curve in your neck, in your mid back, and then also in your low back here. When you start to lose those curves, what happens is the bones, the vertebrae in your, in your spine, they'll rotate and they'll put pressure on the nerve. It only takes the weight of a dime of pressure on a nerve to shut down the nerve that's going to an organ. Uh, it shuts it down by up to 30%. 
and we don't feel those things. So a lot of people say, yeah, I go to a chiropractor for like neck pain or for back pain, which is awesome. We're really good at that. But you want to make sure that there's no interference on any nerves that are going to any organ, any cell or tissue in the body. Because think about it. If you take the nerve that's going to your heart and we cut it, what happens to your heart? It stops. Exactly. You'll die. But if we back off instead of um, cutting the nerve and we put pressure on it, what would happen to the heart? Yeah, it loses efficiency, so what happens? It has to, work, has to work harder. So then we start to wonder maybe by 30, 40 years old, maybe why do I have high blood pressure but I never had it before? Because the heart has to work harder now. Um, and we don't feel it because that organ is not going to feel any pain. Um, but over time, that can start to lead to things like heart disease or cancer. We look at it in the body. Whenever you have pressure on the nerve going to an organ, it's more likely that that nerve is going to cause dysfunction in whatever organ cell tissue that goes to. Um, so a couple things that I look at in the office is, I, again, I want to make sure your spine straight from front to back and from the side you should have those three proper curves. When you lose the curves, we start to things, see things like headaches. Uh, we see indigestion, maybe ears, eyes, nose, throat. We see sinuses. Um, even uh, in your intestines, a lot of people have uh, indigestion or they can't tolerate certain foods. Um, one thing I see with weight loss, for instance, is pressure on the nerves that are going to the thyroid. So the thyroid, what does that control in your body? Metabolism. It controls the way that your body's going to metabolize food. So if you have a really slow metabolism, um, but your thyroid levels are normal, it could just be that the, the thyroid's not functioning at 100%. Maybe it's only functioning at 75%, but you're more prone to not being able to lose weight. Um, so that's one thing that I work on with people in the office. What I found in the office too is that when you can get to the root cause of your health condition like the spine and take the pressure off the nerve, the body always knows how to heal itself. So if, we, if I take my finger and I cut it, um, what's going to happen over the next two weeks? Do I have to tell the body to heal itself? No, because it knows how to heal itself. Over the next two weeks it's going to clot the blood, it's going to get all the fibers together and heal that area in the body. The same thing happens with any organ that's in your body as well. So when I was going through chiropractic college, I learned that um, it can start to take care of my headaches. So once I got my spine corrected and it has the proper curves in it, how many migraines do you think I have now? None. I have absolutely none, but I used to have them three times a month. How many headaches do you think I had that I had daily? None. Absolutely none at all. So what happens is the body knows how to heal itself. You just have to give it the right things. Your body knows how to energize itself, lose weight. You just have to give it the right things. Give it the proper fats, give it the proper, um, you know, the proper carbohydrates um, from whole grain foods like um, brown rice or from sweet potatoes and yams. Those are the good things for you. And staying away from the things that are processed. Because if it's not from the ground or from the ocean, it's probably processed, right? And that can start to have interference in the way that your body communicates with itself. So you're more prone to staying and keeping the weight on instead of losing it. Okay. I'll show you guys this picture. Uh, but this is what it looks like when you, this is like an MRI study from the head. So you can see like this is just the neck. You see the nice curve in there? You see how this one's straight? You guys see the nice curve? That would be the nice curve in the neck here. And then when it's straightened, so through slips, falls, car accidents, um, sports injuries, even poor posture from work, if you start to lose that curve, that's what shuts down the energy or the nerves that are going to organ cells and tissues. Okay, and then so typically in my office what I do is I look to see where is there pressure on the nerves and I do it through a scan. It's a thermoscan. It picks up on temperature differences. So whenever you have any interference on the nerves, it creates inflammation in the body. And so the scan picks up on where is there miscommunication or where, there's, where is there inflammation in the nerves that are going to organ cells and tissues. That's a true preventative approach to understanding if I am going to have a thyroid disorder or maybe if my intestines aren't going to work the right way. If you can look and see exactly where is there pressure on the nerve, before you even get blood work, it's going to tell you. So it's a good way of indicating it. So I know a lot of people like they go into understanding, you know, I don't have neck pain or I don't have back pain, so I don't need to go see a chiropractor. But we literally do the entire system. And I found through this process of doing like exercise with my patients or nutrition or even, you know, teaching them on um, understanding how the body heals itself you can collectively get the whole body back to where it's supposed to be at 100%. So, 
Okay, do you guys have any questions at all? Nutrition wise, any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So, marine or plant. So, you have flax, flaxseed. Um, if you have diabetes, I would go with um, fish oil versus flax because there's an enzyme that gets made when you have diabetes that your body won't be able to absorb flax. So, go with fish oil. Um, chia seeds, you guys have heard about chia seeds? Most of my patients, they go on this shake in the morning. Um, it's a protein shake. It's a plant-based protein shake, but they put flaxseed or chia seeds in it. And it has like brown rice protein and pea protein. So they get the protein in there. Um, what else good? Fish is a good one. Um, salmon is really good. Tuna, you want to buy like tuna steaks versus like tuna in the can. There's twice as much mercury in the canned tuna which again, if you have high mercury levels and you're more prone to keeping on weight because it disrupts signals in the body. Yeah. If, if you guys take away anything from today, I just want you to like try to be aware of the additives that are in things. Uh, because as Americans, we eat almost 10 pounds of additives a year. And you think about that, that's like 10 extra pounds that could be like hanging out in your body somewhere. <laughs> Does that help you? Good. Um, no, go with sugar in the raw. Yeah, it's processed. A lot of sugars are processed. Yeah, I used to make brown sugar, like if you're out of brown sugar and you're cooking, you just take white sugar and like molasses and like yeah. brown sugar. Yeah, yeah. The result is it's going to spike blood sugar and when you spike blood sugar, you increase insulin, you're more prone to hanging on to weight. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, okay, let's go through regular cow's milk. Cow's milk is not produced the same way today as it was 20 years ago. You can ask your parents. Mine tell me about it all the time. <laughs> um, but cow's milk has a lot of, unfortunately, I'm going to tell you guys this, it has a lot of pus in it. Um, because the, the cows have been treated with so many antibiotics, and the, really the, the inflammation of the pus in the milk is because it's trying to heal tissues and stuff. So you're not really drinking a lot of milk in there. Also, if you look on the back of like cow's milk, it has a ton of sugar in there. I think there's anywhere from 12 to 15 grams of sugar. Is that anything specially reduced fat? When they reduce the fat, they yeah. increase the sugar so that, you, so that it's flavorful. Exactly. So fat-free equals sugar-full. Yes. It's not, it's not good for you. Mm -mm. Even when you choose yogurts, like a lot of the yogurts, um, yeah. I, it's funny, I'm part of a networking group and I brought in a can of Mountain Dew because we do presentations, but I brought in a can of Mountain Dew and a little yogurt cup that had like the fruit on the bottom. I'm like, which one's better for you? They're like, yogurt. I'm like, oh my gosh, it has twice as much sugar in the yogurt cup than a Mountain Dew. That's crazy. Don't drink Mountain Dew. Just an <laughs> illustration. <laughs> um, okay, so that's cow's milk. Goat's milk is better for you than cow's milk because it doesn't have a lot of the enzymes that people are allergic to. Um, so if you're allergic to cow's milk or you're lactose intolerant, you're probably going to have a better bet um, with goat's milk. Yesterday I tried goat's milk whey protein. It was not good. <laughs> but um, I would choose goat's milk over cow's milk. Um, above those things, I would choose almond milk and coconut milk. Those are the only sources that I drink. I don't think I've drinking cow's milk in I don't even know how long, years. Um, but the almond milk has a ton of calcium in it. Here's the thing with cow's milk. I love cow's milk because it's so bad for you and they market it the wrong way. So they always say, you know, drink your milk because of osteoporosis, right? So if you take milk and you drink it, what happens is it's so acidic in your body, meaning your body has to balance it out. So it literally takes calcium and vitamin D away from the bone to try to digest the milk. So taking calcium out of the bone, what is that causing? Yeah. Osteoporosis. It's like, dang. We thought we were doing the right thing. Um, so I would go for almond milk because it has a ton of calcium and your body doesn't have to pull away the calcium levels from the bone to try to digest it. Um, always go for unsweetened. My favorite is the unsweetened vanilla. I just think it tastes awesome. Um, and then coconut milk is really good for you too because again, it has a lot of median chain triglycerides in it which produces a lot of energy. With the coconut milk, again, you want to go with unsweetened because some of them can get pretty sweet. Rice milk is good. 
Um, soy, I am just not a fan of soy. I just feel like it's just, we've just modified it way too much and we should really stay away from it. Unless you can get the organically not modified, you know, forms of soy, like some of the tofus, for instance. But you really don't want to focus your diet on eating soy stuff because there's certain elements in it. They're called, oh, I think they're called xanthoestrogens. They basically mimic estrogens in the body. So if you take a male and he eats a lot of soy, he's going to start to produce feminine, like, press because it has it mimics the estrogens in the body okay does that help good what is it good grains I will tell you guys if you go two weeks without gluten you'll probably notice a huge difference in your body um, so let's go with like gluten free ish I would go with brown rice um, Oat is good. Is there a difference between the, the whole oats and the rolled oats, or does it work better? I don't know. I don't think so. Steel cut is the least processed, so anything that's least processed is probably better for you. Um, versus instant, instant's just going to spike your insulin levels a little bit differently. The only reason I eat instant oatmeal is because I eat it like right after I work out, so I know because I can't digest sugar, I know it'll surge, it'll cause a surge of sugars into my muscles to actually repair it. Um, but if you're gonna eat like oatmeal in the morning, go for like steel cut. It takes a little bit longer, but if you put it in a crock pot, it's awesome. It's really good. Um, what else for greens? Wild rice is really good. A lot of people have reactions to barley. I don't know why. Um, but again, I would go with sweet potatoes and yams too. What about, um, quinoa? Quinoa is really good. That's a really good one. Yeah, they have at least eight grams of protein per serving in it. Okay, that one's a really good one. Um, yeah, but the thing is with gluten is our gluten here in America is completely different than the gluten over in Italy. So if you eat pasta here in America, we got a ton of gluten in it because we just like to change the texture and everything and make it delicious and quick. We can make it really quick. Um, but if you go over to Italy, for instance, and you have pasta over there, they have like half the amount of gluten. So they don't really have all those allergies over there. Um, but we use it, again, to change texture. So Brown rice pasta is really good. Mm -hmm. You can get that at Walmart or Publix. So if you make your own pasta, mm -hmm. is that better? Yeah, for sure. With a pasta maker. That's awesome. Good. Yeah, they have brown rice flour even at Trader Joe's. Or chickpea flour is really good too. Every quarter, I do like a dinner with the doc of my patients. So we do some type of healthy dinner in the office. It's really fun. But the last one we did was uh, chickpea crepes. They were so good. So, okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Yogurt. Greek yogurt versus diet. Greek yogurt is probably better for you. It'll just fill you up longer too because there's more protein in it. Um, yeah. The Mediterranean, I think it's called. It looks so pretty. There's so much sugar in there. Yeah. Yeah, check the sugar. Again, you want to stay under five grams. I can't even get low fat plain under five grams. I think it's like seven or nine, which is fine. But try to get your yogurts 12 and under. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can do like, if you guys like yogurt for breakfast, do like a yogurt bar. Put, get plain yogurt and get some granola and stick it in there. And um, then get some fruit, like berries. Berries are awesome. They're really high in uh, the antioxidants and they'll fill you up pretty well too. Um, certain fruits I would stay away from if you're trying to lose weight. Bananas, they're really high in sugar. I know they have potassium but so does broccoli. <laughs> um, so bananas I would stay away from, and um, like melons, a lot of those have really like a ton of sugar in it. Now fruit juice versus regular fruit, what's the difference? Yeah, they process it, so it's always better to have just the fruit itself because it has the fiber, which means your body won't spike the insulin levels and it won't gain the weight as much. Yeah. Exactly. And you want your body to do the work. Because that's where you're getting all the nutrients. 
right. Extracting the nutrients you need. Right. As opposed to having it extracted already before it even enters your body. Exactly. Yeah, it needs to go through that process. So. And for okay. all of our chocolate lovers out there, yeah. I know the newest craze is dark chocolate. Oh, yeah. And I've heard that 70% or above is what you should go for. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, 70 or above. I like 90. I could actually tolerate 90. <laughs> that sounds really good, yeah. 90 doesn't have quite as much sugar in it, so I can tolerate a little piece. I get excited. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the higher the sugar, and again, this is in like Norway and Sweden, they have sugar that's high, like in the cocoa that has 80% or so, they don't have as much sugar in there. Um, so here's another thing with artificial sweeteners. Um, if you put it on your tongue, the body already knows that you're trying to eat something sweet, so automatically it kicks up the insulin levels. So like if you have diet soda, for instance, and you drink that, um, you think you're doing yourself justice because it's low calorie, um, and it has caffeine in it, but if you um, put that on your tongue, the body already spikes the insulin levels, so if it spikes it but it's not getting its calorie content, it's going to dip really low, and so you're just going to be like, I need something really quick. I'm really hungry. So it creates cravings really quickly. Okay, cool. Did you guys learn a lot? Okay, yeah. I'm sorry you guys didn't get my cool PowerPoint. I'll put it up for you. <laughs> And then um, if you go to genesisgainesville.com, I'll put some stuff on there for you, too. All right, cool. All right, you're welcome.